हेलो हेलो डॉक्टर सुषमा सुन पा रहे हैं आप हाँ जी हाँ जी हाँ जी सर आई कैन तो हाँ जी आप लाइव हैं जी हम तो आप स्टार्ट कर सकते हैं मैडम नमस्कार आई एम डॉक्टर सुषमा कोऑर्डिनेटर ऑफ दिस वेबिनार ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स एंड अवर ऑनरेबल गेस्ट आर वेलकम टू दिस इंटरनेशनल वेबिनार organized by maharani lakshmi bai college and the webinar topic is life with covid 19 i want to share some instructions with the participants before starting of the webinar first of all all the participants fill their attendance in the chat box they fill, they will type their entry id oblique name public city public country you have seen your entry id from your email because we have sent already your entry id on your mail second instruction is that they fill the feedback performa in 15 minutes after the completion of the webinar we will share the link of the feedback performa after the completion of the webinar in the comment box third instruction is that certificates will be given to the only participants who have submitted the feedback performa so please be attentive and note carefully fourth instruction if there is any query or questions regarding this webinar please write it in the comment box we will discuss these comments in the question answer session i repeat instructions again all the participants fill their attendance in the chat box they will type their entry id oblique name oblique city oblique state then oblique country you have seen your entry id from your email because we have sent already second instruction is that they fill the feedback performa in 15 minutes after the completion of the webinar we will share the link of the feedback performa after the completion of the webinar in the comment box or chat box third instruction is that certificates will be given to the only participants who have submitted the feedback performa so not carefully fourth instruction if there is any query or questions regarding this webinar please write it in the comment box we will discuss these comments in question answer session abhi ye sabhi nirdesh main hindi mein dohrane ja rahi hu kripya dhyan se sunne jaise hi webinar hamara abhi start hua hai aap sabhi apni attendance ke liye chat box mein jayenge jo ki aapki screen par niche dikhai de raha hai usme aap apni entry id dalenge एंट्री आईडी आपको ईमेल पर हमने भेज दी थी जिस दौरान हमने आपका रजिस्ट्रेशन हुआ उसी टाइम हमने आपको एंट्री आईडी सेंड कर दी थी सो so, सबसे पहले अपनी एंट्री आईडी डालेंगे उसके बाद आपका नाम आपकी सिटी नेम आपका जो है स्टेट आपकी कंट्री आप मेंशन करेंगे चैट बॉक्स के अंदर दूसरा निर्देश यह रहेगा कि फीडबैक परफॉर्मा फीडबैक परफॉर्मा इज मस्ट क्योंकि फीडबैक परफॉर्मा अगर नहीं भरा गया और सबमिट नहीं करवाया गया तो आपकी ये अटेंडेंस नहीं मानी जाएगी सो so, आप जैसे ही हमारा वेबिनार खत्म होता है हम फीडबैक परफॉर्मा जारी कर देंगे लिंक उसका जारी कर देंगे आप उस पर क्लिक करेंगे और अपना फीडबैक परफॉर्मा भर कर उसको फिर आप सबमिट करवा देंगे ये चीज ध्यान रखेंगे अगर आपका सबमिट नहीं हुआ तो आपका सर्टिफिकेट जारी नहीं किया जाएगा अगर आपकी कोई कैरी है या कोई क्वेश्चन है तो आप जैसे ही हमारा वेबिनार चल रहा है तो आप उस दौरान भी अपने जो है क्वेश्चन चैट बॉक्स में राइट करेंगे ऐसा नहीं है कि क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन चलेगा तभी आप अपने क्वेश्चन पूछें बल्कि जब भी वेबिनार हमारा चल रहा है हमारे की नोट स्पीकर अपने व्यूज रख रहे हैं आप उसी दौरान अपने क्वेश्चन चैट बॉक्स में रखेंगे हम आ, जैसे भी हमारे लिए शूटेबल होगा हम उन क्वेश्चंस को लेंगे 
और जब हमारा सेशन क्वेश्चन आंसर का सेशन स्टार्ट होगा हम उन क्वेश्चंस को स्पीकर्स के सामने रखेंगे मैं दोबारा से सारे निर्देश दोबारा से दोहराने जा रही हूँ कृपया ध्यान से सुने सभी पार्टिसिपेंट्स अपनी अटेंडेंस अभी से स्टार्ट कर सकते हैं अटेंडेंस में आपको अपनी एंट्री आईडी डालनी होगी अपना नाम अपनी सिटी अपनी अपना स्टेट अपनी कंट्री और उसके बाद आप फीडबैक परफॉर्मा जो कि जैसे ही हमारा वेबिनार खत्म होगा उसके पंद्रह मिनट बाद हम लिंक जारी करेंगे आप उस लिंक पर जाकर फीडबैक परफॉर्मा भरेंगे उसके लिए आपको पंद्रह मिनट दिए जाएंगे और अगर आपका वो फीडबैक परफॉर्मा सबमिट नहीं हो पाता है तो आपकी ये जो स्टार्टिंग में आपने अटेंडेंस लगवाई थी ये भी नहीं मानी जाएगी और अगर फीडबैक परफॉर्मा नहीं सबमिट हुआ तो किस उस पार्टिसिपेंट को जो है सर्टिफिकेट जारी नहीं किया जाएगा तो कृपया ध्यान से जैसे ही लिंक जारी हो आप उस पर क्लिक करेंगे परफॉर्मा ओपन करेंगे और उसको फिल करेंगे परफॉर्मा के अंदर आपकी एंट्री आईडी फिर से मेंशन करनी होगी आपको मस्ट होगी आपको अपना डेजिग्नेशन बताना होगा कॉलेज नेम बताना होगा आपका नेम होगा आपकी मेल आईडी होगी ईमेल आईडी होगी सबमिट पर क्लिक जरूर करें क्योंकि कई बार देखा है कि पार्टिसिपेंट्स पूरा परफॉर्मा भर देते हैं बट सबमिट पर क्लिक नहीं करते हैं तो वो सबमिट नहीं होगा आपका परफॉर्मा और उसके बगैर आपका सर्टिफिकेट जारी नहीं किया जाएगा तो प्लीज जो पार्टिसिपेंट्स है इन दोनों बातों का ध्यान रखें सबसे पहले अपनी अटेंडेंस जो कि अभी स्टार्टिंग से जारी हो चुकी है चैट बॉक्स जो कि आपकी स्क्रीन पर है मैंने तुम्हें लिंक भेजा है उस पर तो 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 गलत लिंक कर रखा होगा अभी व्हाट्सएप उस चैट बॉक्स पर जाएं और आप उसके अंदर अपनी अटेंडेंस डालें उसमें आपका जो है एंट्री आईडी होगी आपका नाम होगा आपकी सिटी हाँ जी ऑब्लिक जरूर यूज कीजिएगा बीच में आपकी सिटी होगी आपका स्टेट आपकी कंट्री और जो फीडबैक परफॉर्मा होगा वो जैसे ही वेबिनार खत्म होगा उसके पंद्रह मिनट बाद जारी कर दिया जाएगा आपको पंद्रह मिनट का टाइम दिया जाएगा फिल करने के लिए आपको लिंक जैसे ही जारी होता है उस पर क्लिक करना है और कई बार ऐसा होता है कि जैसे ही लिंक जारी होता है कि पार्टिसिपेंट्स बहुत सारे होते हैं और वो जैसे ही क्लिक करते हैं तो वो लिंक है बिजी हो जाता है तो प्लीज उस पर बार बार ट्राई करती रहे ऐसा नहीं है कि आपका फीडबैक परफॉर्मा जो सबमिट नहीं होगा क्योंकि जो लिंक है वो हम पंद्रह मिनट तक शो होगा वहां पर आप आराम से उस पर ट्राई कर सकते हैं लेकिन उसको सबमिट जरूर कीजिएगा मैं बार बार यही बात दोहरा रही हूं कि जब तक आप उसको सबमिट नहीं करेंगे उस पार्टिसिपेंट की अटेंडेंस नहीं मानी जाएगी और सर्टिफिकेट वन मिनट सुषमा जी वन मिनट डियर पार्टिसिपेंट that you have joined in the previous webinar which was of national level and the topic was uh, impact of covid-19 on indian economy whosoever has attended the seminar webinar on 30th may please remain assured that all will be issued certificates actually it is very time consuming to write the names of the all and filling the full certificate is time consuming so daily we are preparing 100 certificates and if by chance there is any mistake in any of the certificate do bring it the notice of uh, organizers we will rectify it you don't have to worry even an inch to get the certificate every participant will be issued certificate definitely surely remain assured need not to worry and now my over to dr sushma thank you ma'am ye cheez hum baar baar isliye bata rahe hain ki jin ka performa submit ho chuka hai unka jo hai certificate definitely diya jayega issue hoga agar aap apna submit hi acche se nahi karwayenge to wo submit jo hai aapka certificate jari nahi kiya jayega to please और बार बार यही बात शो हो रही है कि हमारे यहाँ पार्टिसिपेंट्स बहुत ज्यादा हो जाते हैं तो बी 
पेशेंस सबको सर्टिफिकेट्स दिया जाएगा जो भी ये अटेंड करेंगे और अच्छे से जो है अटेंडेंस जिनकी हो जाएगी और जो सबमिट अपना परफॉर्मा सबमिट करवा देंगे नाउ आई रिपीट अगेन इंस्ट्रक्शंस ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स फिल देयर अटेंडेंस इन द चैट बॉक्स दे विल टाइप देयर एंट्री आईडी पब्लिक नेम पब्लिक सिटी पब्लिक स्टेट पब्लिक कंट्री यू हैव सीन योर एंट्री आईडी फ्रॉम योर ईमेल बिकॉज़ वी हैव सेंट ऑलरेडी second instruction is that they will they feel the feedback performer in 15 minutes after the completion of the webinar we will share the link of the feedback performer after the completion of the webinar in the comment box third instruction is that certificates will be given to the only participants who have submitted the feedback performer so please be attentive and note carefully fourth instruction If there is any query or questions regarding this webinar please write it in the comment box or chat box we will discuss these comments in question answer session main yaha ek baat dobara dohrana chahungi ki jaise hi chat box mein aap apna question dalte hain uske liye koi time fix nahi hai हमारे स्पीकर्स बोल rahe hain webinar hamara start ho chuka hai aap us dauran jo hai apne question answer क्वेश्चन पुट कर सकते हैं राइट कीजिए आप चैट बॉक्स में हमारा जैसे ही सेशन स्टार्ट होगा क्वेश्चन आंसर का तो आपके वो सभी क्वेश्चंस लिए जाएंगे और कोशिश की जाएगी कि हम कंक्लूड करें सभी क्वेश्चंस को और एक कंक्लूजन हम रखें क्योंकि टाइम बहुत थोड़ा होता है तो हम सभी क्वेश्चन नहीं रख पाएंगे बट कोशिश तो होगी कि हम वो सब क्वेश्चन रख पाए जो सब सारे क्वेश्चन की सारे जो प्रश्न अगुवाई करते हूँ तो इसलिए प्लीज आप अपने क्वेश्चन जरूर डालें राइट करें चैट बॉक्स में जैसे वेबिनार चल रहा होगा आपके माइंड में जो भी आप सुनते हैं या जो टॉपिक को लेकर जो है आपके माइंड में कोई क्वेश्चन आते हैं तो आप उसे डालें राइट करें चैट बॉक्स में आपकी स्क्रीन पर चैट बॉक्स नीचे दिया गया है देखे जरा और उस पर क्लिक करके आप अपना क्वेश्चन मैंशन करें और हम उसे जब हमारा क्वेश्चन आंसर का सेशन होगा तब हम उसे लेंगे एक बार मैं फिर से सारे निर्देश हिंदी में दोहराने जा रही हूँ कृपया ध्यान से सुने अटेंडेंस जो कि अभी जारी हो चुकी है जैसे ही हमारा वेबिनार शुरू हुआ है अटेंडेंस लगनी शुरू हो चुकी है आप सभी अटेंडेंस के लिए अपनी एंट्री आईडी, डी आपका नाम ओब्लिक आपकी सिटी ओब्लिक स्टेट ओब्लिक कंट्री मैंशन करें चैट बॉक्स में चैट बॉक्स आपकी स्क्रीन में नीचे दिया गया है उसके बाद आपके कोई क्वेश्चन जो भी क्वेश्चन या क्वेरी है वो आप चैट बॉक्स में ही राइट करेंगे और आप किसी भी सेशन की क्वेश्चन से सेशन की वेट नहीं करेंगे आपको जो भी क्वेश्चन पूछना है वो आप चैट बॉक्स में राइट कर देंगे और जो सबसे जरूरी बात है वो यह है कि जैसे ही हमारा वेबिनार कंप्लीट होगा हम जो है लिंक जारी करेंगे फीडबैक परफॉर्मा का आप उस फीडबैक परफॉर्मा के लिंक को क्लिक करेंगे और अपना परफॉर्मा भरेंगे और सबमिट करेंगे अगर जिस भी पार्टिसिपेंट का फीडबैक परफॉर्मा अच्छे से सबमिट नहीं होता है या उसमें कोई कमी रहती है फीडबैक परफॉर्मा में तो सर्टिफिकेट जारी नहीं किया जाएगा और दूसरी बात ये कि जैसे ही हमारा वेबिनार खत्म होता है हम पंद्रह मिनट एक्स्ट्रा देंगे फीडबैक परफॉर्मा भरने के लिए और जो भी पार्टिसिपेंट्स ये कहते हैं कि हमारा जो है लिंक ओपन नहीं हो रहा है तो वह धैर्य बनाए रखें क्योंकि जैसे ही लिंक हम जारी करते हैं तो बहुत सारे उसी टाइम जो है पार्टिसिपेंट्स क्लिक करते हैं तो इस वजह से कई बार कुछ पार्टिसिपेंट्स का लिंक ओपन नहीं हो पाता है तो आप ट्राई करते रहे क्योंकि हम पंद्रह मिनट आपको इसके लिए दे रहे हैं और सबमिट का जो है क्लिक सबमिट पर क्लिक करना ना भूलें Now, I repeat instructions again. I will take just one minute, Sushma. Okay. I just want. I just want to inform all the participants that doctors from Melbourne are just joining us. They are behind the stage. Last two minutes are being given to you for the final attendance, and after that, we will not mark any attendance. Uh, doctor has come. गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्ते 
नमस्कार नमस्कार डॉक्टर पीटर यू प्लीज कम इट्स जस्ट जॉइनिंग आई थिंक द लिंक वाज कंफ्यूजिंग सो इट शुड बी ऑल राइट नाउ ओके आई थिंक ही विल टेक वन और हाफ मिनट नॉट मोर देन दैट नाउ इट शुड बी फाइन have you given him the new link yes it's uh, it's uh, yes i have given him the new link okay uh wo backstage mein hai unko bhi andar le aaiye okay subhash ji mr peter is on backdrop aa gaya Again. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi. So now we are going to start this webinar. First of all, I welcome all. I welcome Dr. Peter Kelly. I welcome from the bottom of the heart, Dr. Vasudeva. I welcome our chairman of governing body, Maharani Lakshmi Bai College, Isar. Mr. Bharat Bhushan Pradhan and chairperson of this international webinar, Dr. Nilam Prabha ji, I welcome you all. And now, I take this proud privilege to introduce our team of speakers one by one. First, here is the brief introduction of Dr. Peter Kelly. Dr. Peter Kelly, head of infectious diseases at Peninsula Health, Melbourne. in australia he is a renowned doctor in australia and specially known for his dedicated services dr peter has two small daughters aged 6 and 9 and he likes going for bush walks along with the family he is a basketball player and loves to play as and when he gets time and above all he has a big passion for piano am i right yes that's right <laughs> he is very very uh, music loving person and <laughs> uh, along with that he is extremely dedicated to his profession we feel honored dr peter to welcome you on the board today as a keynote speaker we wish you and you were loved ones safe and healthy life thank you very much and now and now i am introducing dr vikas vadha i am honored to welcome dr vikas vadha presently he is chief medical officer at peninsula health melbourne in australia dr vikas born in kanpur in india He left the country at the very tender age of seven. He has done all his studies and trainings abroad. He too has two daughters. One is studying to be a lawyer, and the other is in medical school. Doctor Vikas loves his pet dog like anything, and he daily goes for a walk with his pet. Moreover. He is also a music lover, and he likes to play Indian songs, Hindi songs on piano. He is a very popular because of his humbleness at Peninsula Health and master of his field. We feel proud and welcome you today from the entire Maharani Lakshmi Bai family, Hisar. Once again, I welcome both of you. and really we are honored that two renowned international personalities are associated with us to bless us to guide us and to deliver their views on uh, life with corona covid 19 sushma thank you uh, i have done your job and now i give mic to both the doctors as per your convenience you address the audience okay ma'am thank you ma'am now i request to our keynote speaker dr P dr peter kelly i think there is some connectivity problem yeah 
Okay. Right. Now I can ask. Dr. Peter, you start, please. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll share it now. Yes. All right. Lucas will just start the uh, share the slides and I'll start the presentation. While Vickers is loading up the slides, I would, I'd like to thank you all very much for inviting Vickers and I to give this presentation today. We, we both feel very privileged and honoured to do that. Today we're giving a talk about update on COVID. Um, it seems we've dropped out. Um, yeah, this, can, can they upload the screen, please? There we Is that showing now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, you you can advance the second slide, thanks, Vickers. Okay, so we thought we'd start off with a little bit of geography. So the arrow you can see on the left of the picture is the tip of India, and then in the middle of the picture is Australia, where we are presenting to you from today. And down the bottom part of Australia is where Victoria is. And in the red box down the bottom, you can see Frankston, which is um, where our hospital is situated, the little red dot in the red box. So right down the bottom tip of Australia is where we are found. Um, can you please forward the side one? So this is a uh, one aerial shot of our hospital. Um, it's kind of a huge hospital, it's about 450 bed hospital um, at Frankston in Victoria in Australia. And it's a, a shot at the left side, you can see the new part of the hospital and walk back the older section of our hospital. Um, so we thought we'd just also show a picture of, of some of our staff um, on the wards at the hospital before we sort of regress into this talk. Um, so just at the start of the talk, I'd just like to go over the outline. Um, so I'll be talking first and talking a little bit about the SARS coronavirus, a little bit about the clinical presentation, um, about diagnosis and treatment. Um, and then I'll be handing over to Vikas and he'll talk a little bit about the Australia's experience about COVID in India, and then we'll stop at the end for some questions. Um, so just a little bit at the start about the SARS coronavirus, um, because if you move the slides forward one, please. Um, so this all really started towards the end of last year in December, last year, when there was a number of severe pneumonia cases diagnosed in Wuhan city in Hubei province in China. And all these cases initially seemed to be linked to a, a seafood and animal market. And then it spread um, and we had person to person spread after that. So the virus was initially called the novel coronavirus because it was a new one that we had never seen before. And then subsequently it was given the name as the severe acute respiratory coronavirus number two or SARS-CoV-2 as a lot of people know it as. Um, the confusing thing is WHO also gave it another name. It's also called the COVID-19, which stands for Coronavirus Disease 2019. So that's why it has sort of two names. One's the name for the disease. Um, the other name is the name of the virus. Um, because can you please forward it? So we've had coronaviruses around for quite a few years. The first human coronaviruses were discovered in the 1960s um, and they weren't quite so severe. They generally cause what we know as a common cold, so sort of sniffles and a bit of a cough. Um, they can infect both humans and animals. Um, but sometimes, as we, as we sort of move over, some of the newer coronaviruses do cause much more severe infections, um, including very bad pneumonia, chest infections, um, and lung failure. And the two recent ones was one called um, the original SARS coronavirus, um, which was discovered in, in China in 2003 and then spread out to Hong Kong and several other countries. And that had a mortality rate of about 10%. But luckily, about one year or so after this virus was um, discovered, it actually died out and we haven't seen it again since then. More recently, there's been another coronavirus, a severe one called MERS coronavirus, or the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome virus. Um, and that was originally discovered in Saudi Arabia in 2012. And it does have a much higher death rate, or probably rate, about 35% for MERS coronavirus. 
Um, and we still see um, intermittent cases of this. It seems to be spread by camels um, and people get it from camels. And you also have some person to person transfer, but it doesn't appear to transfer very efficiently between people. So we've only seen small outbreaks of this rather than a big pandemic as we have with the current coronavirus. So you can just record the slide things with this. Um, so what do we know about COVID-19? Um, similar to the, uh, the previous coronaviruses, we know it's spread by respiratory droplets. So when people cough or sneeze, they produce large respiratory droplets. Um, even talking and singing, you know, that produces droplets that can spread the virus. Um, if we cough onto our hands or also onto surfaces or other objects, um, we can spread the virus onto those areas. And then if someone else touches that and then touches their face, they can also become infected with the coronavirus. Um, now that the coronavirus has been around for quite a few months, we do know quite a lot about it. So the incubation period is after you get exposed to virus and security until you start to develop symptoms. And the average um, is about five days, but it can be anywhere from two days up to 14 days. But most people generally develop symptoms within 14 days for the SARS coronavirus too. Um, we also know that it's probably zoonotic. And zoonotic means that it's come from an animal. Um, and when they looked around China, there were some coronaviruses that were found in horseshoe bats that's very similar to the current virus. Um, we don't know whether the virus jumped from bats to people or whether it went through another animal first with the original um, SARS virus that actually went through an animal known as the civet cat and then people caught it from that. But with the current coronavirus, we don't really know if there's an animal that people have caught it from. Um, so when, when we talk about the symptoms of the virus as the clinical presentation, so the commonest symptom seems to be fever. Um, a lot of people have a dry cough. They can feel quite tired or fatigued. Some of the other symptoms that are less common include having a sore throat, um, feeling short of breath, having chills, um, having muscle aches and pains, and even less common symptoms are uh, nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. Uh, now, as we've learned more about this virus, um, some interesting symptoms that have been found to be quite specific for coronavirus include loss of taste and loss of smell. Um, and a lot of the guidelines are now including these in when we look at what the um, case definition is for coronavirus. So that's a sort of inter interesting symptom we haven't seen with previous coronaviruses, this loss of smell, which was first um, seen in the UK and Italy, um, and now a lot of countries are adopting that and they're trying to tell if people have coronavirus or not. Um, thanks for this. So with the coronavirus, most people actually have very mild disease. So from studies from China, about 80% of people have mild disease. And interestingly, quite a lot of people actually have no symptoms at all, what we call asymptomatic. Um, we think anywhere from sort of 20 up to 50% of people may actually have no symptoms with coronavirus. And that's why it makes it quite difficult to stop the spread. Um, at the other end of the spectrum, it can cause very severe chest infections, pneumonia, um, and also death. And from the studies from China, we know about 14% of people had a severe disease and 5% of people, 5 of people sorry, had critical disease, meaning that all their organs were failing and most of those people unfortunately died, even despite intensive care support. Um, some of the other interesting complications from COVID um, include effects on the heart, on the kidneys, and on blood clotting. Um, and there's also been some interesting uh, effects on the skin, something known as like COVID toes, where people have got sort of red marks on their toes. Now, looking at all the, um, the patients, there's been some studies which have shown some risk factors for severe infection or severe disease. Um, and these have been discussed in the US, in Italy, and also from China. And we're getting quite a good picture of what makes people develop severe disease. Um, so it seems to be more common in um, male people um, in older people, so people who are over 65 particularly, people who have chronic medical conditions, so high blood pressure, diabetes, problems with their heart and their lungs, um, people who have cancer, kidney and liver disease. Also, if you're overweight or obese, that seems to be a risk factor. And also, if you're a smoker, that also gives you a risk of having more severe disease. Um, now, when they've tried to look at the case fatality rates of the number of deaths with this, it's quite variable between different countries. And overall, at the moment, it's probably about 6% worldwide, but as I said, it differs in different countries. In Italy, it's been up to sort of 14%. 
Um, and in other countries like Singapore, it's as low as 0.09%. Um, possibly the 6% is an overestimate because the number of cases that are detected probably only detects people who are unwell and sick. And there's probably a lot of people who have mild disease who never get tested, which would mean that the, the death rate would be a lot lower if you actually included those people in the numbers as well. Um, so it's possibly more like 1% that we don't know. Now, a concept that I wanted to introduce was something called R0, or the basic reproductive number. Um, and this is a, a concept in infectious disease where it's when someone has an infection, if no one else is immune to the infection, it represents how many people that they can infect. And for coronavirus, it's if you have one person sick, if one person is sick, sorry, how many people can they infect with it? And if the R0 is less than one, so if I can't not even infect one person, then the infection will die out. But if your R0 is greater than one, then the disease will expand and spread to other people. Um, so for SARS coronavirus 2, we think that the R0 is about two to three. Um, so it means that every person infected, they infect two or three more people. Um, I've just got a, a diagram which sort of explains this. So we just go forward one to this. So you can see the person in red is the person with the coronavirus. And you can see if the R0's two, then they infect two more people and then two more people are infected. So you get this exponential increase in cases. So you go from one person, in the example here, up to sort of 16 people. Um, and with SARS coronavirus, if you have no controls in, and the doubling almost happens in a couple of days. And so you can see the exponential increase in the number of cases. You can go from just a few cases of coronavirus to very large numbers in a very quick space of time. Um, and if people have seen the, um, the information from overseas, like in the US, you can see their numbers have increased very quickly. Um, now, what can we do to influence this R0? Um, I've just got this diagram here, um, and there's different time frames. So before people actually um, get infected and um, get exposed, there's the incubation period when they come in contact with someone with coronavirus, and at this stage, they're not infectious. Then there's the asymptomatic infectious stage, um, where they don't have any symptoms, but they still can actually spread coronavirus. And the information we have now is we think that people may be infectious two to three days before they develop any symptoms. And then you have the symptomatic period where people have symptoms, and then you have the recovery. Um, so where we can influence some of this, is you can try and um, do physical spacing. Um, so things like travel bans, isolation at home, social distancing can all influence R0. Um, to try and influence exposure and try and prevent people from actually catching the infection, you can use masks. Um, you can also identify and isolate contacts to incubate prior to the infectious period. Um, the other thing you can do is, as we're doing, trying to develop a vaccine or prophylaxis to try and prevent people from becoming infected. Um, and then when people are actually infectious, you can try and isolate them to prevent them, prevent them spreading infection to other people. Um, and then ultimately the other thing we want to do when people are infectious is try and treat them with something that reduces their infectiousness. And obviously this is areas that we're all working towards at the moment to try and develop a treatment for coronavirus and also vaccine and prophylactic drugs, and I'll speak about these a little bit later. Um, one thing we've talked about in Australia, and it may have been talked about in India as well, is flattening the curve. Um, and there's been a big study in the Lancet recently that which has shown that social distancing actually does reduce the risk of contracting coronavirus. So if you look to the left of this picture, there's a graph in blue, um, and this is the epidemic curve and this is what happens if you don't do anything. So you can see you get quite a large peak. But by introducing um, social distancing, you can actually flatten the curve and delay it. And you can see it in the graph in brown, it's a lot flatter and it's being pushed to the side, to the right. Um, so what you do is you reduce the number of cases, but also delay it and give your hospitals and your medical staff a, a chance to prepare for coronavirus. So that was really the importance um, of the social distancing. I know that Australia and India and lots of other countries have tried to introduce this um, and other measures to try and reduce the, um, the height of the curve. Thank you. Uh, 
about how do you diagnose coronavirus? So there's two main ways of doing that. The first one is actually detecting the virus. Um, and most of the testing that you'll see on the television when people have a swab taken from their nose or throat, they're actually um, detecting the virus. And that's the most accurate way of detecting it in the first sort of 10 days. Um, the graph down the bottom, you can see the line in black, that's the actual virus. So that peaks and then disappears in about 10 days. So early on, that's the best way of detecting the virus. Um, we have special tests now on PCR or molecular tests. And what it does is actually detect the um, genetic code of the coronavirus. Um, and these are run in private laboratories and, and specialized hospital laboratories. And they can do this special testing for us and tell us which patients have the virus. The other way of detecting it is detecting um, antibodies. So these are, are proteins that your body makes when you get exposed to infections. And this is what gives us immunity to infection. So this is what we're hoping with the vaccine, it'll be able to make antibodies. So Antibodies are usually produced later, um, and you can see the graph there in blue. The IgG is a type of antibody, and it's normally produced about two weeks after you get exposed to infection. Um, so, a lot of countries are currently working on antibody tests, um, but these do not see you if you got the infection early on. They're useful at detecting people who've been exposed to the virus and seeing whether they possibly are immune to it in the future. So. We're hoping with these tests, we'll be able to work out which people have been exposed to the coronavirus and then also see whether they've developed immunity so it'll protect them from getting the coronavirus in the future. And because it it's popped out. Is it? Um, it's still showing up here. Okay. okay. All right, thank you. Um, so next I wanted to talk briefly about treatments. Um, so, prophylaxis is treatment you can give to either um, to prevent people from getting infection. Um, and there was a big trial done in the US just recently with about a thousand patients where they gave um, hydroxychloroquine, which is an anti malarial drug, to people who had, a, had, had an exposure to see if it prevented them from getting coronavirus. But unfortunately, that trial was not effective and it didn't, in people who didn't take the hydroxychloroquine versus those that did, it didn't actually show any protection. Um, so at this stage, we don't have any treatment that we can give to people who are exposed to coronavirus to prevent them from getting infected. Um, as far as treatments for the virus, um, a lot of studies have tried different types of treatments. Um, the first one was an, an HIV medication known as lutinavir or um, And a few trials from China have showed that this medication, unfortunately, is not effective to, um, to treat coronavirus. Um, a controversial medication, hydroxychloroquine um, and chloroquine are, are both anti-malarials. Um, and there's been a lot of interest in these because in the laboratory, they seem to um, prevent the entry of coronavirus getting into cells. So potentially they would be effective treatments for coronavirus. But um, there was a large study that came out a few weeks ago published in the Lancet that said they actually increase, increase people's risk of death um, because of heart problems. But it's been subsequently found that that was um, an inaccurate trial um, and the, the Lancet has actually removed that article now. So we still don't know whether hydroxychloroquine is effective or not. Um, and there's ongoing trials at the moment to work that out. But some of the media recently around it, around it being not effective and actually causing increased death, it sounds like it's actually inaccurate. And it was done by a large American data group who um, subsequently found out that the information may not have been accurate. The, the other medication that's very promising is a, an antiviral known as remdesivir. Um, and a large trial um, in the US recently has published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, and it was shown in, in people with moderate to severe um, coronavirus that it shortened the time to recovery from um, 15 days with no treatment versus 11 days with the treatment. Um, Unfortunately, it didn't have a mortality benefit, so it didn't prevent deaths, but it did speed up time to recovery. The other treatment that people have been looking at is um, if you have someone who's recovered from coronavirus, you can take their antibodies, which I was talking about before, and try and inject that into other people who are sick to try and give them protection. Um, and this is known as convalescent plasma. And at this stage, there's very small trials that show and it may be effective, but we're still waiting for more information. You know, just everyone's got their hopes pinned on vaccines because if we can develop a vaccine 
against coronavirus it's effective and we can protect a lot of a lot of population and prevent them from getting infections so at the moment it's about 10 different vaccine candidates that are in phase one to three clinical trials which means you know are actually being um given into human um, candidates to see if they're effective um but usually vaccines take a number of years um to be made usually up to about 10 years but we're hoping with the technology we've got nowadays that we can sort of fast track this and have a vaccine within one year um, but there's still a lot of work being done across the world on this now, as i've mentioned there's not really a good effective treatment for coronavirus so most treatment is generally supportive treatment and what i mean by that if um people need oxygen we give them oxygen if they're having trouble breathing and they're in hospital we can put breathing tubes down to help them we can give them fluids for their veins if they've got um, if their blood pressure is on the low side so all the stuff we normally do to try and help people to support them to let their immune system fight this virus Thanks. um unfortunately there's been a lot of misinformation um and i sort of started the slide saying beware of misinformation so this has happened in china but also in india unfortunately some officials have recommended herbal medications despite any evidence that they're effective um so if you take medications it may not be effective if the patients at risk and you can sort of solve hope um the us is also hasn't helped with and president donald trump at one stage had suggested injecting disinfection or bleach could help and obviously this is um, very dangerous and very poor information um there's also been other myths that drinking alcohol or methanol may also help get rid of virus and these also are very dangerous and shouldn't be done um another type of um way of treating the virus was what was done in sweden where they thought if everyone developed immunity to the virus it would be one way of tackling it so they didn't do any social isolation um but unfortunately i think sweden's now said this is not a good idea and of all the norwegian countries that had the highest death rate so I, th I think they now wish properly that you know they had done something similar to what other countries have done with the social distancing thanks speakers so what can you do to protect yourself and your family so probably one of the most simplest things but the most effective things is to wash your hands um so it's important to wash your hands if you can with soap and water for at least 20 to 30 seconds um other options are if you can get them would be alcoholic hand rubs um they're also good as long as have at least 70 percent alcohol um it's also very important not to touch your mouth eyes or nose especially with unwashed hands because if you have touched the virus and it gets under your hands then you touch any of these areas the virus can get in and cause infection um it's also important to have good respiratory or cough etiquette so if you are coughing or sneezing you cough into the hook of your elbow um or into a tissue and then you throw that into the bin um, I've mentioned a few times social or physical distancing and as I've mentioned the Lancet study has recently shown this is a very effective way at reducing your risk um, of getting coronavirus um, and I looked at the distances at least one meter is ideal and potentially if you can actually social distance more than that up to 1.5 or, or even two meters um, that's even better although it can be quite difficult but if you can try and maintain physical distancing it seems to offer protection against coronavirus also because uh, it's probably more chance of catching it in crowded places if you can avoid going to crowded places if possible and if you are unwell with symptoms potentially of coronavirus try and stay home and to self-isolate but obviously if you are very unwell then you would need to go to your doctor or a hospital to seek treatment and the last part of my talk is just about face masks um, so there's been a lot of talk about face masks and the WHO or the World Health Organization um, have recommended people to wear a face mask if you are unwell with coronavirus type symptoms to try and prevent you spreading it to other people. If you are caring for someone at home who is sick with coronavirus to wear a face mask um, and also to use one obviously the doctors and nurses in the healthcare setting and a recent Lancet study has shown that wearing face masks does protect you against coronavirus versus not wearing a face mask. Um, the main trouble, I guess, with this is that the availability of face masks, and there's not a huge number of face masks in a lot of countries. Um, so that was one of the recommendations to try and save face masks really in the healthcare setting. 
But if you if you have the cotton face masks, they probably don't protect you so much, but they may protect other people in that if you were coughing, it may prevent some of the virus spreading to other people, so that may be of a benefit. But there's still, I guess, a little bit of controversy around the cotton face masks as to how effective they are versus the other types of face masks, such as the surgical face mask. I'm going to just hand over to Vickers now. I think he's going to... Thanks, Peter. Um, just going to... Um, firstly, I want to say namaste and thank you for the privilege of coming and presenting on COVID-19 to you all. Um, we Hindi a little bit of Hindi when we were in India. But if it can happen, I'll do it in Hindi. Is um, the screen showing me okay? Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yes, yes. Thank you. So um, I'll follow on from Peter. Um, there's a stigma around any infectious disease and COVID-19 is nothing different. The consequences of having the stigma is that people will tend to not show their illness. The, white, the big worry is that people will not seek health care. This is not something that is only in, um, you know, the countries that have got a lot of COVID, but it's been seen even in Australia where people are not coming for attention. So people who have cancer are getting advanced disease. They're not coming to seek attention. People are having heart attack. They're having stroke outside. We have noticed also in our hospital services that people are not coming to the emergency room because they don't want to get COVID. There is a susceptible group, people who are of Asian descent, because the concern is that the virus started there. People who travel are thought to be those carrying the virus and healthcare workers. And I think this is something that India has also seen is that healthcare workers are being singled out um, and hurt because they are thought to be carrying COVID. The manifestation of the stigma is that people may be kicked out of uh, their accommodation. Again, we have seen that in Australia as well. People don't have this information correct. So people's accommodation, um, their opportunities at work and so forth is affected because there is this misperception. We can do something about this. We can try and just reach out to people and not use the terms that perhaps people like Donald Trump have used with regards to COVID-19, is calling it the Chinese virus. Uh, Dr. Vadva, one minute, one second. I take this opportunity to please uh, interview you. Our lots of participants are from Hindi belt and Hindi medium. Okay. So please. Because they will not be able to understand thoroughly uh, as the accent of Mr. Peter was absolutely different. So Anji. be kind to us and Anji. please favor us and speak a little bit in the in Anji, mix. Jaroor. Anji, jaroor. Anji. Thoda, thoda main slide pe bhi keh deta hu ki aise hota hai ki log ham log sochte hain ki kisi ke paas COVID hai to उसको कई परेशानियां होती हैं उनके लिए भी और अपने लिए भी उनके लिए है कि वो लोग दिखाते नहीं हैं अपने हेल्थ प्रॉब्लम्स तो एक्चुअली उनका वो हेल्थ केयर नहीं मिलता जैसे किसी के पास कैंसर हो या या कुछ हार्ट में प्रॉब्लम हो या कुछ और हो तो वो हॉस्पिटल नहीं जाएंगे नहीं जाएंगे तो नहीं दिखाई जाएगी और ये सब बीमारियां 
ज़्यादा बढ़ती रहेंगी तो ऐसे लोग होते हैं जो एशिया या चाइनीज़ के होते हैं तो उनको सोचा जाता है कि वो लोग के पास अब सब उनके पास ही वायरस है तो हमको इनका थोड़ा सा सोचना चाहिए कि वायरस किसी के पास भी आ सकता है और किसी ऐसी चीज़ नहीं है कि बस समझा जाए कि इनके पास वायरस होगा और ये जो डॉक्टर्स नर्सेज जो हॉस्पिटल में काम करते हैं और हमने देखा है इंडिया में भी कि इनका काफ़ी परेशानी मिलती है क्योंकि लोग सोचते हैं कि यही हॉस्पिटल में काम करते हैं तो इनके पास कोविड होगा तो दूर ही रहें या उनको मारें या कुछ करें आई होप आई एम स्पीकिंग ओके तो ऑस्ट्रेलिया में क्या हुआ है कि कैन यस कैन यू सी ऑल ऑफ दो सेक्शन वन टू सिक्स ओके थैंक यू तो ऑस्ट्रेलिया में क्या हुआ है ऑस्ट्रेलिया का थोड़ा काफी लकी uh, हुई है क्योंकि कोविड इतना जोर से नहीं आया है पर कोई रीजंस हैं क्यों ऐसे हुआ है इनका रिस्पांस भी और जैसे साउथ कोरिया में भी और न्यूजीलैंड का रिस्पांस हुआ है इन्होंने बहुत जल्दी से एक्शन लिया था कि बीमारी फैले नहीं पहले जब जोर से चल रही थी बीमारी ऑस्ट्रेलिया में तो हर दिन 400 करीब केसेस होते हैं और ऑस्ट्रेलिया की आबादी भी बहुत छोटी सी है आपको पता है कि करीब ढाई करोड़ लोग हैं इस कंट्री में तो ज़्यादा तो है नहीं और अब केसेस इतने कम हो गए हैं कि 10-20 भी नहीं होते हैं दिन में पूरे देश में और इस विक्टोरिया की स्टेट में कल से आज 24 घंटे में एक भी केस नहीं हुआ है um, क्यों ऐसे अच्छा हुआ है कि वो जो एक्सपर्ट्स um, हैं जो स्टेट uh, गवर्नमेंट और कॉमनवेल्थ uh, गवर्नमेंट के एक्सपर्ट्स हैं उन्होंने जल्दी से इकट्ठे मिल के प्लान बनाया है कि इसको कैसे रोकेंगे और जल्दी से इन्होंने uh, रोक दिया है सोशल गैदरिंग जैसे लोग इकट्ठे नहीं हो सकते हैं जैसे पाँच दस लोग पार्क में भी क्रिकेट भी नहीं खेल सकते क्योंकि वो उनको सब जोर से फाइन लगा देते पर यहाँ की पॉपुलेशन भी थोड़ी ज़्यादा जल्दी से समझ लिया है इन्होंने कि हमको नहीं करना है क्योंकि वह वायरस बहुत बहुत नुकसान दे सकता है सबको तो उन्होंने पूरे बॉर्डर्स बंद कर दिए हैं ऑस्ट्रेलिया का तो ऐसा है कि यह आईलैंड है तो कोई कंट्री है नहीं पास में इनके तो जल्दी से इन्होंने बंद कर दिया और चौदह दिन जो भी आएगा वापस जैसे ऑस्ट्रेलिया के जो लोग हैं वापस आ रहे हैं तो उनको चौदह दिन होटल में भी लगा दिया पर मेरे को लगता है कि इंडिया ने भी ऐसे ही किया था कि होटल में भी बुक करके उनको क्वारंटीन डाला था पर यहाँ थोड़ा सा इजी था कंट्रोल करना क्योंकि वो पुलिस भी वहीं बैठ जाती थी सब देखते थे कि कोई होटल से निकल नहीं सकता है खाना भी वहीं पहुंचाया जाता था सब कुछ तो ये नंबर फाइव पॉइंट है जो पब्लिक बहुत समझदार हुई थी इस बात में और इनफैक्ट गवर्नमेंट के रूल्स आने से पहले ही पब्लिक ने रोक दिया था अपने आप को सब लोग घर में बैठ गए थे काम छोड़ दिया था और काम कंप्यूटर से करना शुरू हो गए थे और अभी तक वो ही चल रहा है कि बहुत लोग जैसे हमारे हॉस्पिटल में भी बहुत लोग हैं जो घर में ही काम कर रहे हैं और गवर्नमेंट का अभी रूल है कि जो भी अभी तक घर में बैठा था अभी बैठे ही रहेंगे काम पे आने को अलाउ नहीं कर रहे हैं उनको कह रहे हैं कंप्यूटर में ही काम होगा और ये टेली हेल्थ जो है इसमें का मतलब है कि सब डॉक्टर के अपॉइंटमेंट्स वगैरह जो भी हॉस्पिटल में भी होते थे या वो प्राइवेट डॉक्टर्स के भी वो कंप्यूटर से ही हो रहे हैं तो ये इसके लिए काफ़ी सक्सेस uh, हुआ था ऑस्ट्रेलिया को पर ऑस्ट्रेलिया ने सब कुछ ठीक नहीं किया था इन्होंने एक बड़ी शिप थी ये जो रूबी प्रिंसेस शिप थी इनमें बीमारी फैली बहुत हुई थी और इन्होंने सिडनी में इनको पैसेंजर्स को उतार दिया था शिप से और 700 केस निकले हैं इसमें से 
तो मतलब जितने पूरे केसेस ऑस्ट्रेलिया में हुए हैं टेन परसेंट इस शिप से ही आए हैं और ये बहुत बड़ी गलती की थी उन्होंने और ये इसका बड़ा इन्वेस्टिगेशन चल रहा है इसमें से 22 लोग भी आ, मर गए थे पर ऑस्ट्रेलिया ने छः हफ्ते लगाए थे पूरे बॉर्डर बंद करने में क्योंकि वो चाइना को बंद कर दिया था पहले फिर ईरान को बंद किया था बट अमेरिका को समझा नहीं इन्होंने कि ये बहुत बड़ी सी वायरस की हॉटस्पॉट है तो उससे हमारा काफी नुकसान हुआ है और हमारे पेनसुला हेल्थ में भी ये ऑस्ट्रेलियन लोग जो थे यूएसए में वो लोग स्की करने गए थे वहाँ पे और बहुत सारे वापस आए थे हमारे हॉस्पिटल में भी जो पॉजिटिव टेस्ट हुए थे वो जो अमेरिका गए हुए थे छुट्टी पे वहीं वो लेके आ गए थे वापस तो हेल्थ सिस्टम हमारा कोई इसके कोई कैपेसिटी है ही नहीं जो वायरस अगर फैलता बहुत ऑस्ट्रेलिया में तो हम कुछ कर नहीं पाते तो एक्चुअली थोड़ा सा हमारी ऐसी किस्मत अच्छी निकली है कि हमको ज़्यादा नहीं करना पड़ा अब तक वो पर्सनल प्रोटेक्टिव इक्विपमेंट में काफ़ी कमी पड़ी थी उसका भी प्रॉब्लम बहुत निकली थी क्योंकि यहाँ पे मैन्युफैक्चरिंग बहुत कम है ऑस्ट्रेलिया में तो थोड़े ही से जगह है जहाँ पे पीपीई बनता है वैसे हम लोग भी चा, चाइना पे ही डिपेंड करते हैं तो मैसेज गवर्नमेंट से भी कभी कभी कोई कुछ कहता है कोई कुछ नहीं कहता है तो ऑस्ट्रेलिया का हेल्थ सिस्टम थोड़ा सा अजीब है कि गवर्नमेंट कॉमनवेल्थ वाली फेडरल गवर्नमेंट पैसा तो देती है पर हर स्टेट का रूल और ये जो हॉस्पिटल वगैरह चलाते हैं वो अपने मन से करते हैं तो यहाँ पे जो एक स्टेट कर रहा है कुछ दूसरा स्टेट नहीं कर रहा है तो जैसे मेलबोर्न से सिडनी जा सकते हैं यहाँ पर हम लोग सिडनी से ब्रिस्बेन नहीं जा सकते क्योंकि क्वींसलैंड ने बंद किया हुआ है बॉर्डर और हम लोग पर्थ भी नहीं जा सकते क्योंकि वेस्टर्न ऑस्ट्रेलिया ने बंद किया हुआ है तो ये थोड़ा सा मिक्स्ड मैसेज होती हैं और जिसको अपना करना है वो अपने आप करता रहता है तो थोड़ा सा कन्फ्यूजन डाल देते हैं पर फिर भी थोड़े कुछ किस्मत हैं कि ज़्यादा नहीं हुआ है आपको पता होगा कि ये करंट स्टेटस है एक दो दिन पहले का ही है आई थिंक ये कल का ही है कि साढ़े कितने साठ लाख से ज़्यादा लोग इन्फेक्टेड हैं दुनिया में और करीब चार लाख डेथ्स हो गई हैं मर गए हैं लोग तो देख सकते हैं कि यूएसए में तो बहुत ज़्यादा ही वो लाल रंग का है कि वहाँ पे बहुत फैला हुआ है पर ऑस्ट्रेलिया और इंडिया को कंपेयर करो तो ये आता है ऑफ कोर्स कंट्री तो काफ़ी डिफरेंट है पर अगर देखेंगे जो रिकवरी हुई है ऑस्ट्रेलिया में एक्चुअली कोई बहुत कम लोग बचे हैं जिनकी एक्चुअली एक्टिव इन्फेक्शन पड़ा है करीब 500 लोग ही होंगे देश में अब जिनका एक्टिव इन्फेक्शन पड़ा है अभी इंडिया के काफ़ी ज़्यादा हैं जो एक्टिव हैं और नंबर्स तो पता ही नहीं है कि कोई सही है कि नहीं है वो तो ना इंडिया का ना ऑस्ट्रेलिया का ना कहीं का क्योंकि जितने टेस्ट करेंगे तो उतना ही पता चलेगा और टेस्ट ज़्यादा नहीं होएंगे तो पता नहीं चलेगा कि ये नंबर सही है कि नहीं पर अगर ये ग्राफ देखेंगे ये कल त, आ, दो दिन पहले का ही है ये कितने केसेस हैं और आप देख सकते हैं अगर इंडिया और ऑस्ट्रेलिया को कंपेयर करेंगे तो ऑस्ट्रेलिया फ्लैट कर कर दिया है कि इसके केसेस बढ़ नहीं रहे हैं पर इंडिया में जो केसेस हैं वो अभी तक बढ़ रहे हैं और पीटर ने बात की थी वो केस फर्टैलिटी रेट की कि कितने लोग मर जाते हैं जिनमें पॉजिटिव टेस्ट हुए हैं अगेन ये इसका कर्व का पता नहीं चलता कि क्या है क्योंकि ऑस्ट्रेलिया ने बहुत टेस्ट किए हैं जितनी पॉपुलेशन है तो जितने ज़्यादा टेस्ट करेंगे तो काफ़ी लोग मिलेंगे जो पॉजिटिव होंगे पर वो उनके सिम्टम्स बहुत कम है तो डेथ रेट थोड़ा सा कम ही लगेगा उसमें इंडिया का ये जो टाइमलाइन था नीचे जो दिखा है कि फेबरी में शुरू हुआ था इंडिया में केसेस आने का और थोड़े दिन बाद जैसे महीना हो गया था फिर केसेस बढ़ने लगे थे मार्च में फिर स्क्रीनिंग शुरू हुई थी इंडिया में और ट्रैवल का रुकावट हुई थी फिर डिस्टेंसिंग शुरू हुआ था मिडल ऑफ मार्च तक और फिर 
मार्च 25 करीब लॉकडाउन हो गया था पर इंडिया का लॉकडाउन थोड़ा सा मुश्किल ही है क्योंकि उसके बाद आप देख सकते हैं कि केसेस और डेथ्स बढ़ते गए हैं ये बस अप्रैल तक है पर प्रॉब्लम है कि इतनी बड़ी इतना बड़ा देश है इतने लोग हैं और लॉकडाउन तो बहुत ही मुश्किल चीज होती है और लोगों का समझ भी लॉकडाउन का थोड़ा सा हाँ भी है और ना भी है क्योंकि जो लोग कहते हैं लॉकडाउन होना चाहिए वो तो कोई रीजन होते हैं पर जैसे इंडिया में है उसका बहुत मुश्किल होता है क्योंकि अगर लोगों को लॉकडाउन हुआ है और इनके इन्फेक्शन है तो इन्फेक्शन बहुत जल्दी से फैल सकता है तो उसका कोई सही आ, सही आंसर नहीं है अगर ये देखेंगे इसमें इसमें टेस्ट कितने हुए हैं अगर एशिया और ऑस्ट्रेलिया का देखेंगे तो इंडिया में तो करीब 40 लाख टेस्ट हो गए हैं और ऑस्ट्रेलिया ने करीब 15 लाख किए थे पर पॉपुलेशन इतनी छोटी सी है उसका मतलब है कि पॉपुलेशन के हिसाब से देख सकते हैं कि टेस्टिंग जितनी ज्यादा करेंगे उतने ज्यादा मिलेगा एक्यूरेट इंफॉर्मेशन पर प्रॉब्लम है कि वो जितने टेस्ट अगर मिलता है कोई जिसका कोविड इन्फेक्शन है पर उससे क्या करेंगे आप तो ऑस्ट्रेलिया में तो थोड़ा सा आसान था क्योंकि वो कह सकते हैं कि तुम घर में बैठो घर से काम करो और खाना घर तक आ सकता है शॉपिंग भी घर तक आएगी तो लोग तो काफी मान लेते हैं ठीक है और पॉपुलेशन थोड़ी पॉपुलेशन कम है पर इंडिया में जब सब बहुत लोग इकट्ठे भी रहते हैं तो वो बहुत मुश्किल हो जाता है तो इंडिया का जो चैलेंज है आगे के लिए वो काफी काफी डिफिकल्ट है हम सोचते हैं कि एक तो है कि पॉपुलेशन जितनी है कई लोग जो है गांव में रहते हैं उनको शायद ज्यादा पूरा नहीं पता होगा कोविड के बारे में तो कैसे इसको कैसे बच के रहना है या कैसे करें अब अब जैसे वो बुढ़े जो छोटे लोग होते हैं वो बड़ों के साथ भी रहते हैं तो उसका मुश्किल हो जाता है क्योंकि डिस्टेंस डिस्टेंस बनाना मुश्किल होता है घर में अब टेस्टिंग भी कॉस्ट कॉस्ट तो बहुत होता है टेस्टिंग का तो कैसे कौन पे करेगा इसके लिए तो ऑस्ट्रेलिया में तो इतना था कि सब लोग तो फ्री में टेस्ट मिलता है सबके लिए तो लोग कभी दो बारी चार बारी पांच बारी करा लेंगे अपना टेस्ट तो यहाँ पे तो कोई ऐसा रोका नहीं है मेरे को लगता है कि शायद इंडिया में कई जगह हैं जिनमें जाके लोग पे करते हैं टेस्ट के लिए तो वो बहुत मुश्किल पड़ेगा क्योंकि फिर लोग टेस्ट भी नहीं कराएंगे क्योंकि उनके पास पैसा भी नहीं होगा उसके लिए वैसे सब जगह दुनिया में पी हेल्थ केयर वर्कर और इंटेंसिव केयर यूनिट की के तो कमी सब जगह लगती है इटली में भी बहुत कमी पड़ी थी और पर अगर आबादी इतनी बड़ी है तो बहुत मुश्किल होता है कि इसका संभालना और पॉपुलेशन भी बहुत सारे लोग होते हैं ना इकट्ठे तो उसका बहुत मुश्किल होता है कंटेन करना तो सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग और जो चीज़ें पीटर ने बताई हैं कि ठीक से खांसी हाथ का हाइजीन हाथ से साबुन और पानी से धोना वो कैसे कैसे होगा सबके लिए और इंडिया में एक चीज है कि डायबिटीज और ब्लड प्रेशर काफी ज्यादा है और पता है कि हमको कोविड के साथ कि इन दोनों कंडीशंस के साथ कोविड ज्यादा मुश्किल देता है और फिर प्रॉब्लम है कि जो सबसे गरीब हैं वो सबसे रिस्क पे हैं कोविड के लिए तो ये बहुत मुश्किल हो जाता है इकोनॉमी के लिए एक तो है कि उनके उनका कोई और रास्ता तो है नहीं कमाई का तो मुश्किल होता है सबसे ज्यादा तो उनको लगेगा तो लॉकडाउन को कैसे कम करें इंडिया में ये कोई क्वेश्चन पता नहीं इसका जवाब कैसा है पर लगता तो है कि अभी इंडिया थोड़ा सा ईजिंग हो रही है रिस्ट्रिक्शन में और वो सबसे वो एक्चुअली काफी अच्छी चीज है कि रिस्ट्रिक्शंस कम करें क्योंकि लॉकडाउन कोई सलूशन ऐसा है नहीं कि परफेक्ट uh, होगा तो अगर कुछ भी नहीं इंडिया करता तो मार्च में ये चीजें आई थी वो पेपर्स में तो सबसे दाए uh, uh, हाथ में सेक्शन में जो कोव इंड नाइनटीन स्टडी ग्रुप का है जो मार्च बाईस को था इसमें लिखा था कि 
अगर कुछ भी ना करेंगे तो मई पंद्रह जो ऑलरेडी पास हो गया है इंडिया में करीब बाईस लाख केसेस होंगे अभी तक तो नहीं हुआ है ना तो वो अच्छा हुआ है कि इन्होंने कंट्रोल करने से इसको रिड्यूस किया है तो ये सबसे बाई सेक्शन में वो मई चौबीस को ये लिखा था कि अगर कोई इंटरवेंशन नहीं होंगे तो जुलाई तक करीब कितने ये कितने हैं तीस या चालीस करोड़ इंडियंस इनको इन्फेक्शन मिल सकता है तो ये अभी तक जुलाई तो आया नहीं है पर इतना ज़्यादा लगता भी नहीं है कि ऐसा होगा और बीच में जो इंडियन काउंसिल ऑफ मेडिकल रिसर्च ने लिखा था तो उन्होंने कहा था कि अगर सोशली डिस्टेंस कर सकते हैं तो करीब अस्सी या नब्बे परसेंट से कम हो सकते हैं ये इन्फेक्शन्स तो लगता है कि कुछ तो अच्छा कुछ तो करना चाहिए और इंडिया ने काफ़ी कुछ किया है कि ये नंबर्स नहीं आ रहे हैं पर अभी चैलेंजेस तो बहुत ज़्यादा हैं आगे के लिए इंडिया के लिए भी पर पूरी दुनिया के लिए भी और ऑस्ट्रेलिया भी तो प्रॉब्लम है क्योंकि हमको पता भी नहीं है कि हम लोग बॉर्डर्स कब खोल सकते हैं काफ़ी टेंशन है इकोनॉमी नीचे गिरती जा रही है सब जगह और कुछ समझ नहीं आ रहा है तो वहाँ भी काफ़ी कन्फ्यूजन्स हैं तो हम वहाँ यहाँ पे समाप्त करते हैं अपना फॉर्मल प्रेजेंटेशन ये हमारे स्टाफ भी हैं उनको थैंक यू हम कहना चाहेंगे ये जब अब कोविड शुरू हो गया है ये ऐसे ही चल रहा है दूर दूर खड़े हैं लोग और मास्क और प्रोटेक्शन पहनते हैं Dr. Peter, can you hear me properly, Dr. Peter? Sorry, Samir. Yes, I can hear you. Dr. Peter, a question for you, asked by Dr. Meena from Chandigarh. Question is that your view about Indian method of COVID prevention by taking hot water boiled with black pepper, tulsi leaves, turmeric, and lemon juice. So the, the question was whether, whether that would help with COVID. Sorry. I repeat again. Uh, yeah. Uh, she wants to uh, know your opinion. I think your view about Indian method of COVID prevention by taking hot water boiled with black pepper, tulsi leaves, turmeric, and lemon juice. Okay. Um, look, it's, it's tricky because we we don't know if anything actually works for prevention. I mean, the, the only way to really know is to do like proper studies where you compare people who take it with people who don't. So, I can't, I can't really give you any advice as to whether that would be effective or not. But without sort of studying it, we we, we would wouldn't know. Okay. Thank you, thank you, doctor. Uh, next question, uh, doctor Vadva. This question is for you. Ask for Gurmeet Singh from Amritsar. Dr. Vadha, can you hear me properly? हाँ जी हम हम को सुनाई दे रहा है. Thank you. Question is that is this virus man-made or else? <laughs> is this virus man-made or else? Oh, um, actually काफी ये uh, controversies बहुत चल रही हैं कि ये बनाया गया है lab में कि ये बाहर का है. अभी तक तो जो evidence है कोई ऐसे है नहीं कि ये बनाया गया है. शक तो लोगों को बहुत होता है बट अभी ऐसे नहीं सोचा गया है कि ये बनाया गया क्योंकि okay. ये वायरसेस दे वायरसेस आर इन द इन नेचर ओके थैंक यू डॉक्टर डॉक्टर पीटर दिस क्वेश्चन फॉर यू आस्क्ड बाय मिस्टर परवीन कुमार फ्रॉम मुंबई क्वेश्चन इज दैट इज द वर्ल्ड हेडिंग फॉर बायोलॉजिकल वॉर इन फ्यूचर Sorry, can you repeat the question? Bi biological. Come on, come on. Someone will show you a photo. Can you show me? Biological war in future. Uh, biological warfare. Biological warfare. Uh, look, as soon as the question Dickus just answered, it, we think this is probably just an, a natural virus that has adapted from similar viruses in bats, and somehow it's got into the human population. So, we I don't think it's biological warfare. It's, uh, 
the sort of natural warfare from the virus actually getting in and being quite a nasty virus, unfortunately. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Doctor Vadha, this question is for you. Asked by Manisha from Himachal Pradesh. Question is that relaxation in lockdown may invite fatal spread of COVID. You are you, please. Sorry, uh, relaxation in lockdown may invite in lockdown. Fatal spread, fatal spread of COVID. Oh, second, second waves. Oh, I think that's the that's the worry for us all. That, that's an absolute uh, real concern, and that's why most countries are trying to relax lockdown in association with something else. Ki kuch aur saath mein hona chahiye ki koi test ho, jaise app or phone mein jo app hota hai, wo contact ko trace kar sakta hai. So control kaise karenge agar spread shuru hua? So India may be challenging hoga relaxation ka, but um karna to thoda padega dhire dhire se. Sab kuch ek dam nahi ho sakta. Thank you, thank you, Doctor. Doctor Peter, a question for you asked by Netra from Uttarakhand. Tips for schools to run with COVID. Oh, sorry, can you repeat the question? She wants to teach. Tips for schools to run with COVID. No, no. Yes. Uh, I repeat again. Tips. Yes. Tips. Tips for school to run with COVID. Tips for schools to run with COVID. School, school students. School students. Can I go to schools to with COVID? Uh, just any tips for them. Any tips for kids? I repeat again. Tips Sorry. for school. To run with COVID. Yeah, it, we, we think that in children that there is less yeah. severe disease, um, and so in a lot of countries, including Australia now, we're actually sending the children back to school. We think the risk is a lot less. So I think it's okay for schools as long as they still try and practice social distancing as much as possible, and they're careful washing their hands and things like that. It's okay for schools to still go ahead with COVID. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Peter and Dr. Vaka. This question, last and uh, next question for you, asked by Dr. Ajit Singh from Pune. How far we stand to have a vaccine for COVID? How far away is the vaccine for COVID? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a big question. So there are, yes, so I think that the earliest we will be looking at is about a year or a year and a half. Now, there are at least nine or 10 um, potentials Months. going on. I think they're mostly equally distributed between China and America, but there are investigators all over the world trying to develop a vaccine. The, the, the context is that the vaccine will probably be produced before they realize whether it works or not. Um, the, the, the big question is not when the vac vaccine is going to be coming out, but who will get access to it. Um, the risk is that there will be some ethical problems and dilemmas because the country that makes the vaccine first is likely to use it for their own people first. Um, and I think that's something that's going to be challenging. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, one, and one, minute. Minute. one minute. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Vadva. Aapne apne bhashan mein jo hindi mein bol ke mere upar ek karja kar diya hai. <laughs> I think that's amazing. It must have been very, very difficult for you. Uh, <laughs> it, it, my audience, my all the participants, they are specially thankful to you. Formal thanks will be conveyed by the uh, director of the college. But here I want to tell you one thing. Uh, I want to tell every participant that when they Hindi in Hindi and they have their chinta that in the village, in a small house, there are 10-10-12 people who are living in the distancing. So it seems that in your mind, there is a lot of fear for Bharat. There is a lot of fear for Bharat. 
क्योंकि गांवों में जो मजदूर हैं गरीब तबके के लोग हैं वो तो एक दस बाई दस के कमरे में पांच पांच आठ आठ लोग रह रहे हैं उनके लिए डिस्टेंसिंग के क्या मायने होंगे ये चिंता आपकी बहुत वाजिब है और ये भारत के लिए आपकी मोहब्बत को दर्शाता है और दूसरा आपने जो हमारी कल्चर पे आपने इशारा किया कि यहाँ पे ज्वाइंट फैमिली है बाबा की गोदी में छोटा बच्चा घंटों बैठा रहता है और हम ये कहते हैं कि बड़े लोगों को ज्यादा ये कोविड नाइन्टीन प्रो है वो लोग जो है तो हमारी समस्या और दुनिया से हिंदुस्तान की जो समस्या है वो ज्यादा जटिल है आपने इधर इशारे करके अपने हिंदुस्तान के लिए जो चिंता जताई है मैं उसके लिए आपका खास शुक्रिया करती हूँ क्योंकि नस नस को इतने सालों से है लेकिन आपके धमनियों में आपके नब्ज में आज भी हिंदुस्तान बसा हुआ है मैं आपको प्रणाम करती हूँ थैंक यू डॉक्टर शमीन गुस्सा तो लड़कियों पे यहाँ पे घर में वो हिंदी में ही होता है I request Mr. Bhagwan Pradhan, Chairman of Maharani Bai Colleges, to conclude the webinar. Please, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. At the outset, I would like to tell you that that this seminar was really very interesting, and it has opened our eyes, particularly about us, about we Indians. Dr. Peter has explained about the COVID-19 from the origins of it to spread, its risk, its prevention, and its treatment also. He has tell he has told us that we have to live with viruses. There are many viruses we have to fight, and already we are fighting. But the solace, but the solace is given by Dr. Peter. that 81% of the covid patients it is mild for 81% patients is almost mild and death fatal rate is only 6% that gives a solace to us that uh, we can fight with this disease without panic without any fear without any any other reservations some preventions are required dr badwa has uh, almost remained in india while he was presenting his seminar and uh, very very minutely he has been pinned out the problems the basic problem is our population and our way of life living always together so social distancing in such a large population at national level and the large family size the social distancing becomes very difficult but his advice will certainly work and the second problem which is very common and we know all that it is uh, it is very very tough for the population to control any disease when we are not self disciplined in australia you have made some law everybody followed voluntarily rather before that you announced any law but in india it just reverse of it after even announcing the measures we think many times whether to go for it or not to go go for it so it is very tough time and one more thing uh, mr badwa dr badwa has pointed out which is a matter of dikhayega which is a matter of worry for all of us that, that diabetes and hypertension is very widely spread in india that something uh, i was not aware that we are the victims of these diseases at the world level and we are the most senior as far as data are concerned but we have to take care because now we know this problem ultimately the things came out in all this discussion that social distancing washing hands taking care of ourselves taking masks and more more of, of it is that we should aware we people who has participated in this seminar we should become the covid warriors now we should take this we should take the leadership of this now especially in india in view of the problems and issues come up and explained by dr badwa in a very nice manner so with these words i thank you all 
and i thank you dr peter you have explained with the powerpoint issue we got it very very clearly there was no language taboo and dr badwa has taught our language that is no issue that we got everything from that and i thank you all thank you very much thank you so much sir now i will invite dr nilam prabha ji chairperson of this webinar for a word of thanks please ma'am Namaskar. Thanks, Dr. Peter Kelly and Dr. Vikas Vadwa, for wonderful clinical presentation on COVID-19 and convincing analysis on killer virus. As we all know, that life with COVID-19 is not going to be easy, and that is much obvious now. But clearly, there is only one way ahead, and that is to live with it till certain time. by when either we develop an effective vaccine or herd immunity makes us immune to it as yet there is uh, as yet there is no timeline for this to happen so we do not know which way this virus is headed but as our resource persons dr peter kelly and dr vikas vadwa have pointed out in fact of social distancing be aware of misinformation and a careful and disciplined lifestyle is our best bet as yet we should not only to keep ourselves safe but also help others to stay that way we have to train ourselves to lead a drastically changed lifestyle we cannot take anything for granted governments may need to take stern measures from time to time to fight this menace we ought to extend a helping hand and accept this happy once again i on behalf of students staff principal and management of marani lakshmi bai college thank dr peter kelly and dr vikas vadwa and all those who watched this webinar i also thank mr sanjeev mitla for introducing mr dr peter kelly and dr vikas to us i appreciate college principal dr shamim sharma for convening and making this webinar a great success my special thanks to college chairman mr vp pradhan for his concluding remarks of this webinar we look forward to more such interactions shortly i would like to add that we have received some research papers also which are being evaluated thanks to all researchers who have sent their papers at the end i thank all the participants for their active participation coordinator dr sushma for coordinating the webinar nicely and mr subhash for his technical support i thank everyone that would be all for today jai hind in the end i in the so end i want to add one information that i have come to know that dr peter and dr vadva are writing a book on covid 19 am i right and i think perhaps it will be the first book of uh, world uh, on covid 19 yeah. and simultaneously i am announcing it that all the research paper who have sent that abstract we too are going to publish a book Uh, whatever the seminar has taken place today and in that book we would love to add your papers which you have presented here please do favor me and send the paper so that our book may be a uh, unusual one thank you thank you all thank you once again uh, thank you so thank much you. thank you so much thank to the so faculty much. as well especially thanks to our keynote speakers thank you so much aap sabhi ka bahut bahut aabhar हम भी छोड़ दें क्या एस यू विश अभी लिंक जारी कर दिया गया है चैट बॉक्स में सभी पार्टिसिपेंट्स प्लीज चेक करें और लिंक पर जाकर क्लिक करके अपना फीडबैक परफॉर्मा फिल करें क्योंकि तो बार बार यही दोहराया जा रहा है कि अगर फीडबैक परफॉर्मा फिल नहीं किया गया सबमिट नहीं हुआ 
तो आपकी अटेंडेंस नहीं मानी जाएगी और सर्टिफिकेट इशू नहीं किया जाएगा सो प्लीज बी अटेंटिव अपना चैट बॉक्स में जाकर लिंक चेक करें लिंक ऑफ फीडबैक हैज बीन रिलीज हाँ जी मैडम आप यही हो अभी प्लीज चेक द लिंक लिंक ऑफ फीडबैक परफॉर्मा हैज बीन रिलीज प्लीज फिल इट हमारी स्टार्टिंग की इंस्ट्रक्शंस में भी यही था कि अगर फीडबैक परफॉर्मा अच्छे से सबमिट नहीं करवा आपकी अटेंडेंस नहीं मानी जाएगी और सर्टिफिकेट इशू नहीं किया जाएगा तो प्लीज फीडबैक परफॉर्मा आपकी स्क्रीन पर जारी कर दिया गया है 